This sculpture commission began with me almost falling into a pond while holding some mannequins. We really needed an idea of scale at the site before proceeding with drawings and digitized plans. Then the real work began with creating the foam and steel armature at the exact size and scale of the site itself. So once I had the armature in place, I could then cover it with clay, water-based clay, and sculpt the life-size clay figures. The Nereids are based upon a group of sculptures in England with the nickname the Naked Ladies. Unfortunately, the artists and the original intent have been lost to history, hence the name Naked Ladies as opposed to Nereid or Oceanid, which are the Greek words for sea nymphs. Uh, hot tip, artists should always sign their works. With the basic forms completed, I could then work on details. Details are something I really, really enjoy. Just adding detail upon detail until the figure seems to actually breathe and, and to be alive. It's that level of verisimilitude or reality that I find so intriguing about turning a piece of stone or, or a piece of clay into a piece of art. After about six weeks of modeling, some debacles, and 500 pounds of clay, the clay figures were finally ready for casting. Within 24 hours, we began the casting while the clay was still nice and wet. One of the tricky parts of casting is determining where the seam lines are going to be on the mold itself. Each figure has to be cast in sections and then put back together as one mold before pouring in the concrete. So the seam lines have to flow with the figure and make it easy to break apart the mold and put it back together. After carefully breaking the molds apart and removing all the excess clay, the insides of the molds were varnished with shellac and then lined with steel mesh and concrete and then seamed back together. And I did not forget, once we finished pouring the concrete, to sign mine. <laughs> These are referred to as waste molds. They do not survive the casting process and get destroyed as you break out the concrete figures from the molds themselves. Seam lines were then repaired and sanded 
and then the figures were painted white. For final approval, prior to the pieces being installed at my collector's house, we had to forklift the pieces into place, which took some pretty skillful maneuvering. A good team, however, and a forklift make a huge difference. The sculptures were then ready to travel to their destination. Each figure weighed approximately 500 pounds and it took careful planning and strategy to not damage the existing landscape and then carefully install the figures onto the stonescape platforms. In less than a few hours, the sculptures were in place. Once again, an amazing team, and we were able to cover the seam line that conjoined the arms so that it was not even discernible. Since the installation was completed in the fall, it took until spring for the plantings to come in and for the rocks to be completed. Art takes time. <laughs>